I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Survivor Series. I think those of you that have watched me for a long time know this. I miss what it used to be, don't really like what it's become. And I have to say, the addition of the War Games match doesn't make me any more pleased. I'm sorry, but the War Games match for a WWE audience, specifically like your main show audience, I just don't think it works as well. It's too confusing to follow too many goddamn rules. And I'm not saying like I can't follow along. The point I'm getting at is you have to think too much about what's going on and oh wait, they've got an advantage, but at the end of the day, the match doesn't officially fucking start until everybody's actually in the war games cage. You see what I mean? It's just never really been my jam. Just because something was something that the old Crockett Territory and WCW used to do, it doesn't mean that I particularly liked it that much. Not really. And I think part of the reason, especially from a WWE lens that I don't, is that instead of focusing on brutality and storytelling, like maybe some of the old War Games matches way, way back in the day would do, it's a lot about crash elements and spots and flip shit and crap that really doesn't need to be in a war games match. And I think you saw that with the women's war games match. You saw more of an old school, traditional, what you would expect type of war games match out of the men's group. And that one was fantastic. But anyways, let's talk about Survivor Series and let's start. Yes, let's start with that women's war games match. Um, apparently Nikki Cross gave up the stupid... Sh superhero shtick. She's back to being the same pointless, lame as shit, crazy character she was before. So I don't give a crap. Poor Alexa Bliss almost got clotheslined by the camera cable on her way out of the cage and down to the rig. So thankfully she avoided injury there. Although you can say, especially at the end, a lot of people pointed out on social media that she seemed half interested <laughs> in the post-match celebration and probably because the shit really wasn't geared for her, so she didn't care. Kind of that Randy Orton type of attitude. If it's not meant for me to look good, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and I got a call out here. I got a call out. You do a handcuff spot in this women's war games match, but you do it with Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss when you fucking have Rhea Ripley in there. You have basically went full bore, ass cheeks falling out, dominatrix shit. And you've got a match that involves handcuffs and she's not the one directly involved? Help it make sense, people. Because you know damn good and well, as soon as Rhea Ripley left the damn cage, male fans, male wrestling fans, departed with tons of knuckle babies. And for those guys that are saying, well, I don't see what's the big deal. What's so sexy about it? It's not so sexy per se. It's just how a lot of guys think. You have to understand the guy psyche. We like to dominate until it's time for us to get dominated. And a lot of us freaky fuckers actually like that. Like I talked about on Twitter during the match. Like the whole theme for Rhea Ripley should be, First I'll fuck your bitch. Woo! Then I'll whoop your ass. Ow! And a lot of fellas like that. I'm just saying. And she got some juice. She got some junk in the trunk. Not hard to see the appeal for guys. No, she's not 100% my flavor either, but I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying. But damn, like, she's there. It's, anyways, damage control apparently is still a thing. Uh, mind you, I'm saying some of these things because I've hardly watched the past couple of months. So I'm coming into this a little fresher. And I, I just wonder, why are they still a thing? What's the big deal about them? Because they certainly didn't seem like a big deal here. Maybe there are a number of you that really like it because you have an unhealthy obsession with people like Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. And yeah, some of the wrestling fans, when it comes to the women of WWE, are really unbalanced and unhinged. Um, but this match was bad, sloppy, felt relatively aimless. And of all the people you had to pin in this match, did you really have to have Becky Lynch pin Rhea? I don't know. EO Sky looks sloppy, a couple of her spots, like what the fuck was the running back and forth several times, that looks stupid, it was stupid, I thought she really botched coming off the top, you know, just bad, right, just, I did not like this match very much, that's just me, AJ Styles versus Finn Val Valor, obviously not a war games match, 
Uh, but I felt like as I was watching this match, I've seen much better from both of them. And honestly, the reaction I was seeing on social media doesn't necessarily disagree with that assessment. You got two guys that are leading groups that I just don't care about having a match that I don't care about at all. And I come, keep coming back to this. What's the point of the Judgment Day group if they're just going to keep fucking losing? Like they had two featured spots here. Rhea not only was a part of the losing team, she's the one to freaking get pinned by Becky Lynch. And then you come back and Finn Balor's losing to AJ Styles. What's the point of the group if they never damn win? You know, the old Bray Wyatt kind of question. No matter how cool you thought the Fiend or Bray Wyatt was, if he never wins the big match, then why the fuck does it matter and why the hell do you care? And then we get to Shitsy versus Ronda Rousey. And before the match, Shitsy dedicated the match to her late departed father. So, of course, WWE being WWE made sure that she lost this one. <laughs> oh, Vince is gone, we thought. Yes, he is, but the pettiness still reigns supreme in that organization. She's bad. Shitsy is bad. I'm sorry. She really is a shit. Like, what the frick is the appeal with her? She is not good. She is not good. I have seen enough of her. Every time I come back, I come away the same level of underwhelmed and underimpressed. And as bad as she was in this match, it's not nearly as bad as Ronda Rousey is and was in this particular match. Shitsy Black, or excuse me, just Shitsy now. She's not nearly on the same level of suck as Ronda Rousey, as bad as Shitsy is. I really hope WWE feels like they get their money's worth out of Ronda Rousey because I can't imagine fans thinking that they do. Because she is bad. Her eye makeup job looks horrendous. Anytime she works on the microphone, it is a god-awful snore fest. And her matches are clunky and sloppy and choppy. And you know what? I realize that this isn't your first jam. That you haven't been doing it for years and years. But God damn it, when they put a title on you and put you in a featured spot, you should probably work at your craft enough to make it look like you actually give a shit. And she clearly doesn't. Either she clearly doesn't put in the work, or she clearly doesn't give a shit. Like the one spot where shit sees trying to sit there and do the DDT off the top rope on the ring apron, and Ronda like butchers that all to hell. If you're not going to execute the spots right, don't do them. And it's a really bad spot for Shitsy because she could probably stand to be in the ring with somebody that knows what the hell they're doing and instead she got stuck with Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey could really benefit to stand with being somebody in the ring that knows what the hell they're doing and instead she got Shitsy. This match was so bad, the fans were chanting so hard for Sasha Banks that they had to freaking cut the mic to the crowd. That tells you all you need to know. This was bad. Next. Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley versus Seth Freakin' Rollins. I'm still, I'm still squinting, trying to figure out what the hell is so special about Austin Theory. Is it the punchable face? Is it the funny looking mannerisms that he has facially? Like, what is it? The character that's dumbass as hell. Like, what's the appeal here? I know a lot of people are talking about whether he's buried or not. I haven't really watched recently, so admittedly, I really don't care about that. I am not haven't paid attention to that, so I don't have a ton of comment on that. All I can say is, man, it feels like, based off of this match, that they really believe in this guy, and I just don't fucking get it. I don't fucking see it. I just don't. Oh, the match was okay. I mean, the, at least you could say you got the crowd with the finish. They were really hot for the finish, and they really didn't like it. And then we get to the War Games men's match. And for everything that the women's War Games match wasn't, this match was. I love early on, like as everybody's in the cage, Roman's sitting there badass because you know they came to him beforehand and said, hey, Roman, we're going to need you to stand in the cage for a while. And he said, that doesn't work for me, Oose. So he's going to sit there and he's going to look badass and spectacular. And even at one point when one of the Usos was going to go out and he said, no, I'm going to send Sammy. Like the way this whole shit played out is just fantastic. The way they were doing it early in the night when you had the confrontation between Sammy Zayn and Roman Reigns and the way they're teasing some possible friction when he pulls Sammy in for the bloodline hug. And it just, 
fucking master class of storytelling here. It really was. With Sammy Uso and the Bloodline. This match was fantastic. Fantastic. And everyone was thinking ahead of time there was going to be a turn. They were either thinking Sammy's going to turn on the Bloodline and go with his old friend Kevin Owens. I don't know why the fuck he would. He knows where his bread is buttered. He knows, Sammy Zayn knows, that this is the most interesting and hottest he's ever been. Why in the fuck would he want to ruin that? He wants to be associated with the Bloodline. Or that you would have Jey Uso turn the rest of the Bloodline on Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is not the traitor here, folks. It's Jey Uso. That's the motherfucker you gotta watch. Instead of what a lot of people thought they were going to do, the WWE did the right thing. They did a little closer to what I thought they were going to do. It wasn't perfectly aligned, but it doesn't need to be. The point is, they did the right thing. They strengthened the bond. They even teased having Jey Uso super kick Sami Zayn early in the match. Was that going to cause some dissension, cause some problems? But when Roman's, you know, up against it, here comes Sami Zayn to stop the ref count. And Kevin Owens is looking at him. And that's a moment right there. You know these two idiots go way, 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 way back. And it's just fantastic to me to see the development in Sami Zayn over the years. Because I used to rag on this dude all the time, going back to him being El Generico in ROH. And frankly, he fucking deserved it. Because he was terrible. Oh, he could do moves. Who the fuck can't do moves in wrestling now? Who gives a shit? But over the past few years, this guy has worked on his craft. He has honed his craft. He has become a great actor, performer, storyteller. Like Sami Zayn is truly, along with Roman Reigns, ironically, one of the few people in professional wrestling today that basically everything they do, they have the ability to get me to connect to make sure that I give a shit about what's going on. And that's saying something. And I was heavily invested in this War Games match to the point when Sami Zayn saved the day, when Sami Zayn had Roman Reigns back, and the bloodline was indeed victorious. And then afterwards, Sami Zayn got his embrace with Roman Reigns. Jey Uso came up and gave him a big old masculine man hug. I popped. Like, legitimately popped. Like, that was... It felt like a typical WWE pay-per-view in the sense of I had two and a half hours of bullshit to, that I didn't care about to navigate, but I got to that one moment, and that one moment mattered, and that one moment was special, and that one moment overrode everything else, and they fucking did it to me again. And now we're at a place, and we're at a time, we're at a point where you have to entertain Sami Zayn eventually being the one to beat Roman Reigns for the title. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. Like, that's how good this is. That's how much this works. So honestly, if this show would have just been this match, I would have been so tickled. All the other crap leading up to it, I really could have done without. But Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn, The Bloodline, they carried the day for me, made this a passable pay-per-view. But honestly, folks... This is the only match on the show that needs to be bothered with, needs to be rewatched, needs to be remembered.